What's up? What's up? What's up? Hello, March. Hello, Norman. So glad that you guys could be here with, <coughs> with me to talk about Janal. That is the third episode of Star Trek Discovery Season 5. This one um, was a change of pace. Still had quite a bit happening, but it was an episode in a lot of ways that I didn't know I needed. I needed this episode just a little bit. Who the heck knew that Cobra had it in him? <laughs> Who the heck knew? And Clarence and Wingrace have rejoined me for this one too. Thanks, guys, for being here. Let's uh let's unpack this. So we know there's been news in the Star Trek world. I made a video about it. If you didn't see the video, this is the TLDR that we got good news and bad news. The good news was that we have uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, at least all the way up until season four. The bad news was that we have uh, one final season of Star Trek Lower Decks. So we see that um, Lower Decks is ending. Now, I was reading a quote from Jack Quaid and he was like hopefully we'll find a new home and I'm like I didn't think that was the issue finding a home I didn't think the fact that you needed a home would be an issue because you've got a home your home was on, on Paramount Plus so does he mean in in essence the characters themselves will they find a new home I don't know I hope so. I hope that's the case because even though I was uh, very critical of Star Trek Lower Decks in the beginning, I have come to love those characters and I care about them. And I want, to, if we don't get them in Star Trek Lower Decks, I do want to see them in the future. It's not as if we we don't have to write these characters completely off. So will we? We get a new animated series? I don't know. Will we get a new live action series featuring um, the characters in live action? I don't know. But the bottom line is that would be such a waste of such talent if we never see them again. So tell me what you think about that. I'm going to go over to the comments because I think that everybody has something to say. Hey, David, glad that you can make it, sir. Glad you could be here. Um, okay, so Norman said, uh, glad to highlight Wilson Cruz. He stole the show with good acting as the new former Trill. Wilson Cruz did. He stole the show. He was the MVP. I agree with you guys. Hey, Angus, long time no see. I was just thinking about you. I really, it truly was. <laughs> um, Norman said, otherwise, I call this episode going through the mission that they that's yeah <laughs> um save lower save lower decks is is what norman is is, is uh shouting to to the world save lower decks can it be saved can it be saved once these execs uh get it in their head that this is where they want to go and of course, everybody has an opinion. Every one of our talking head type channels has their opinion. And when Grace, who's my friend in the chat, he also put out a video talking about the the end of Lower Decks and um, what's in store for Star Trek in the future. And um, one of his thoughts was that we would probably see that a lot of these moves are being because Paramount Global is in the process or in talks with, uh, right now it seems like Skydance is, has got the winning bid. So they're in talks with Skydance to take over. And um, maybe this is just their way of purging a few things until uh, this deal is done. And then the new owners can come in and kind of switch things up the way they want. Hopefully, hopefully that's it. Hopefully we get uh, Skydance or whomever 
they come in and they assess what worked and that they will go on and uh, pour resources into the things that work, hopefully. Um, Norman also said, I think Paramount is closing up their whole animation sector. Somebody else said that to me. Was it you, Norman, in, in the uh, in the Discord? By the way, Discord links in the show notes. So, um, yeah, I think that was Norman that said that in the in the in the uh, Discord. I hope that they're not, but I don't have any, you know, insider knowledge that some people. Uh, have more insider knowledge than I have. And if that is what's being reported, it really hurts my feelings. It really hurts my feelings, but it also makes sense. It makes sense. If you are going to get rid of Prodigy, the crown jewel of Star Trek animation, if you got rid of that, then I can understand uh, that the only reason you would tentatively do that is if you're getting rid of your animation uh So we'll see. When Grace is saying optimism, I'm thinking a new show or movie, not a new service for Lower Decks. Yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, big screen for the Cerritos, says Norman. You know, that might work. It really might. Um, it, it could work. Because so many people who did go see it on the big screen when they had the, the first episode or two that they did last season on the big screen, they said it, it translated very well. I didn't get to see it, but some people were impressed with how it translated. And then also, there are deeper stories that can be told when you have that extended format as a feature film. So maybe we will get to see them. Or... Maybe it wouldn't be animated because, like we said, we, it could be that they're getting rid of their entire animated division. Maybe we'll see those characters live action. CG is something. We'll see. When Gray says, although seeing them show up in Prodigy be cool, if unlikely. Let me think. Time period, it works out. They could. They could. Um, Angus is all here for more live action lower decks. I am too. I want to see a more in live action too. Marge said, I'm not sure a movie would work for lower decks. Now she is on the other side of, of my, that opinion. She's like, I don't know about that. You know, um, you guys will let me know what you think. If do you think that there, there's big screen potential? David asked, would I uh, enjoy a Lower Decks live action if they if it was done in the same vein as what we saw when they came to uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. When Grace says, there is a Lower Decks petition to save it going around if you want to try. Norman sh uh, shared that in the Discord as well. And I shared it on my, my social media or at least on my Facebook. So I don't know how much we can do to help. It seems like um, Mike McMahon was warning us last season that anything could happen. You know, remember we, we talked about that here on Engage Live, which, hey, y'all, this is Engage Live. I guess I better put that brand up here so you guys know what you're looking at. But yeah, um, we were talking on Engage Live and we were reading um, some of the articles that were about Lower Decks. And Mike McMahon kind of alluded to the fact that that last season, as good as it was, nothing was promised. So we were all like, do we need to save Lower Decks? And it looks like. Um, we should have started making noise, even though it looked like everything was safe, because if maybe, maybe things would have been different if if the fandom would have made a whole lot of noise when Mike McMahon put out that little feeler telling us that some some things might be rotten in Denmark, you know. But yeah. Um I'm I'm trying to trying to find where I was. Okay. 
uh, Clarence says, once again, we're left asking why after the best season of Star Trek Lower Decks, even though every season has, has uh, bested the one before it to me, in my opinion, um, the best season of Lower Decks. And then you say, OK, now seems like a good time to end. Go over to Wing Grace's channel because he talked a little bit more about that as well, where he said that, uh, oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, he said that it seemed like they were aiming for five, but if they got anything more than five, it would have been uh, just icing on the cake. So I wish they would have let us know that as fans. If all we're getting is five, like we didn't act crazy when we re we learned that we were only getting three seasons of Star Trek Picard. We didn't act crazy. We didn't demand more. We didn't do all the only thing that we're demanding now is the legacy spinoff. We are we do want that, but we didn't we we handled that like champs. So if you were only going five, tell us, tell us because then we know that this story is should be wrapping up and it should be satisfactory what we don't wish or hope is what clarence brought up in our discord is that i hope they knew that this was the last season because if not there is no tacking on scenes unless they tack the scenes on in live action you get what i'm saying so if that wasn't the plan if the plan wasn't five uh seasons and in those five seasons we're going to get a complete story told if, it, if that wasn't the plan and they are just pulling the plug, I don't know how we can get it any any closure out of that. You know, Angus says, the problem with Lower Decks is that the characters are ready for serious promotions. I mean, we got the, but th that's the thing about Lower Decks. Just because our crew gets promoted, there are still people who have to be lower deckers. You can keep that going forever. It will be the gift that keeps on giving. We'll keep getting new characters and we'll keep seeing the characters that we're accustomed to grow and move into different places. Um, I don't know if everybody is as emotionally mature to be ready to part ways with seeing the, the lower deck crew, the Cerritos crew that we have come to know and love Uh moving away and doing other things but lower decks are always going to be there and there's always got to be somebody inhabiting those lower decks and i think that's a crew that just keeps on we keep seeing the growth and even if it was a, a, another lower decks with another crew of lower deckers and we watch them do the exact same things that we watched uh mariner boimler tindy rutherford if we watch their progression i'd be okay with that these are series that could go on forever and ever and ever. Uh, David says, Win Grace finally found your channel today. Much I can learn. Yes, Win Grace has a wealth of information on his channel. And good point, Angus from Clarence. Uh, Norman says, two petitions for lower decks. One that just surpassed 2,000 and one that's just about to reach 5,000. So there may be a few overlaps, but safe to say over 6,000 so far. And I don't know how many would be enough to make Paramount execs say, hmm, or if there is enough, are, are there enough signatures <laughs> that could be received that would make Paramount say, hmm. Uh, Norma said that was his, that was your theory. Um, Justin, oh, Justin saying hi. Crisis Point 3 is coming to theaters in 2025. <laughs> Crisis Point, the motion picture. <laughs> Wing Grace, or have them show up in live action in Legacy in a more grown up and mature form. I wouldn't mind that. Now that, that's actually pretty good. Now, it would mean a whole lot more for the actors involved, but one thing that we know about the actors involved is that they love, love, love Star Trek, where they could, uh, if they have time and they're busy, very busy schedules uh, to 
do live action Star Trek because it's one thing to do a voice acting, some entirely different to be live action. If they got have got the uh, time to do live action, I would love to see them show up in Legacy. That would be cool and if we get Legacy. <laughs> Shoot. If we get Legacy. Uh, Norman says, last October, I believe, which is why whenever I see people well, they were ready to finish the series on their own free will. I call BS. Oh, yeah. We are polite Star Trek fans. We are prim and proper. <laughs> um, McMahon clearly wanted to do more. Since season three, he had an ending prepared. It may be the last episode. Justice says, I like. Uh, five seasons of shows, but I want more episodes per season. With uh, Picard, at least they told us ahead of time it was three seasons. I can agree with that. If we knew that it was going, if we knew that it was going to only be X amount of seasons, so be it, so be it. We know we that's what we're getting, and now we can as just anticipate how things are going to end. But Justin says he likes the five uh, season, or yeah, the five seasons. He just wants more episodes. I'll take it either way. Either give us five longer seasons or give us more seasons. We should at least end with, I know they don't want things to go into syndication. We could at least end with 70, 75 episodes. That's uh, 80 episodes, you know? So yeah, I'm just feeling some kind of way about this. A new group of lower deckers would be fun. They could be mentored by Mariner and Co and Co. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got these ones who uh, have risen through the ranks, and then somebody comes, and now they are the the senior officers to these kids, and they have to teach them the same lessons that they had to learn. It, it's it's a uh, uh, I mean the well could just keep running for more stories and it doesn't necessarily just have to feature Mariner Boimler, Tendy Rutherford, Talin, those. We could just keep moving ahead with new uh with with new crews. That's too much like right. Uh Norman said I wouldn't mind a, a future Rama rebirth from time to time, even if it means they'll eventually be at senior level. Yeah, sounds good. Claire says, I I think I'm okay with this if the plan was to turn it into a live action series or movies. I can be okay with it for that reason as well. Norma said there were over 33,000 signatures for Prodigy and so far over 68,000 for Legacy. Um, I believe both of these had more for Sh Strange New Worlds when they did it to green light it, but I'm not sure. Wow. David said, except for TNG, I don't think petitions have been effective, but I hope you can be. Well, a petition was effective for a prodigy. We got prodigy moved to Netflix, but um, we shouldn't be in this position for every series. So let us know what's going on. We can take it. Now, I know they did. They let us know ahead of the final season that this was the final season hopefully that means that the the uh series has a, a climax has an ending that is again satisfactory uh so they did let us know ahead of time they didn't wait till the series aired and then say oh by the way this is it they didn't do that to us but the bottom line is animation this is a series that could have gone on for a long time it could have because um, you're not worried about what the people look like. You're worried about how they sound. And at some point we'd expect some of these characters to mature, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get. If we're going to get anything, you know, after this fifth season, strange new worlds. When I'm referring to a continual series starring Pike, Spock and Una. Got you. Uh, when Grace says with 
Tawny writing for, uh, and Tawny is Mariner. Tawny Newsom is is the actress who voices Mariner, and actually she played her in live action as well. So Tawny Newsom is Mariner, and she is writing for Starfleet Academy. So he he says I could also see her writing herself and Boimler into holographic instructors. Oh, now that would be cool. I think that would be cool. Because we know Starfleet Academy is clean into the 32nd century. So we likely won't be seeing any of these characters, but we could see them in hologram forms or et cetera. Angus, Angus says, uh, do we get to do we get to point paint Noelle Wells green so she can play Tindy in live action? I, I think that would be easier than just painting <laughs> nowadays. Um, we, we've, we've seen Gamora, we've seen Zoe Saldana do it quite a bit. bit. She was green all throughout uh, all throughout uh, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, but there, I think there are ways to do it without actually even painting anymore. Um, we saw Kelsey Grammer come back as Beast in in um, in uh, the Marvels, and I believe it was all mocap. I don't think that he was painted at all. And we saw the same thing with, um, well, we see the same thing with, uh, what's his name, the Incredible Hulk. Mark Ruffalo. We see the same thing. It's it's so much simpler. I mean, I say it's simpler. It's simpler because all they got to do is stick all them stickers on you. It might not be simpler at all, but it does keep you out of the makeup chair for, for however many hours, you know? Um, Tawny is a writer. She is writing for, for Starfleet Academy. Um, and Norman answers too. She is one of the writers for Starfleet Academy. Cool, right, March? <laughs> no. Osira was green. I forgot about her. I, I could have kept her right in universe. Osira was green. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kelsey Grammer plays Beast in the. Uh, he did in in one group of X Men movies. And he showed up in the Marvels at the end. Way at the end, you had to stick around for the after credit scene. And of course, he's blue. <laughs> but yes, it was Kel it was Kelsey Grammer. So yeah, Kelsey Grammer returned for the role. All right. So what we're here to talk about, besides this, you know, we oh, the other thing they they announced um, that was kind of major is that we. Um, are getting a Star Trek origin movie. Now, whether you wanted this origin movie or not, it looks like we're getting it. And there's questions about how they're going to do this origin movie. We, like, what is it going to be an origin to? Is it going to be an origin to uh, becoming warp capable? Are we going to see some wars? That would be cool. That would be a cool era if we get to see... Uh, World War Three, or uh, what? What? What are the other names for? Sorry, the other names for the um, the war, <laughs> the Augments War, the Eugenics War. The yeah, if we can see that, I might be here for a a, a live action origin movie. I really um, I don't know where they're going with this, and that's fine. But they've been threatening us with this movie. Now, for some years, they've been saying Star Trek 4, and then they're like, well, we'll forget Star Trek 4. We're going to skip to Star Trek 0 and give y'all that. <laughs> and I'm not going to get excited until they have something besides their, um, their word of mouth, their good, uh, have it on their good faith that we're getting this movie. I don't have that. I don't have that kind of bandwidth with their, uh, with the execs, because the execs, are what makes things suck. You know, I know that they are there for a reason, but they make things suck. They meddle too damn much. We are telling you as an audience what is working. Y'all ain't listening. I know you can't uh, satisfy 100% of the audience, but at least keep the train on the right track. Y'all trying to do too damn much. Um. 
when Grace didn't care for how Asira looked. She was she was funny green. Norman says, the origin film, what is that? I joke. Is it about how Roddenberry came up with, with Trek? <laughs> I don't know what our origin, you know, like what story they go tell. I don't know. I don't want to see a documentary now. Now, you know, let me choose a documentary. Don't tell me I'm getting a Star Trek movie. And then I get in there and it's a freaking documentary. <laughs> Star Trek Zero, Faith of the Hearts, coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> I wanted to see World War III. I just watched the news. I don't think I need it twice. Well, I don't think I need that in Star Trek right now. Man, a very precarious spot, but I'm not going to take it there. We're going to keep us in our happy place with Star Trek. I am not going to take you whew, where we are right now in the world. At the rate, at the rate with the Kelvin universe and how much older the cast has gotten, we're running out of time to reboot Star Trek Seven or Star Trek Six. Oh, yeah, it's. I mean, it's been years. It's been years. They should have been and put something on the screen by now. I know we had COVID in in that little era, and things were bad. In that time period, we've had plenty of time. We had the writer strike. Okay, I'm gonna give y'all a little grace. We had a strike, we had a pandemic. I'm gonna give you a little grace. But it was like the same day, the same time you're telling us that you're giving us this origin story. You're like, oh no, but you're not getting Star Trek Four. You're not getting that. <laughs> If it were an origin of Avery Book Brooks playing Benny Russell writing Star Trek, that would be cool too. Man, I don't know. If if they brought Avery Brooks in to do anything, to sing, to be the new uh, singer in the lounge instead of Vic, <laughs> we get Ben. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that too. Claire, Clarence wants that. Clarence is uh, currently uh, reviewing the autobiography of Benjamin Sisko. Uh, he's doing that, you know, a couple chapters at a time on his channel discussing Trek. And um, that would be a nice companion piece <laughs> to that movie. But of course, we know we ain't getting it. Right? We're not getting it. Uh, but I do want to read that book. <laughs> I do want that. Um, okay, so what do we have? What do we have? Uh, I gotta go and, and make sure I, I at least say the thing, things that I wanted to say. Yeah, because this episode, pretty darn good. I'm not. Mm, I wasn't like completely blown away by, by the entire episode, but there were moments in the episode that was like, this is fantastic. We should stick it where we should stay right here. And then we had to go and do other stuff. By other stuff, I mean, um, we put a, a focus on a storyline that I know needed to be closed off. We needed to get an end to the Adira and Gray relationship. and. Did it need to be on screen? Uh, for representation purposes, I think yes. Did it need to be so awkward and drawn out? And I, I guess that to me was the weakest part of the episode was dealing with Adira and Gray and um, making it like, this was something that you could see coming because that was Reno's whole little arc when she was talking to Stamets. She, you don't see that? I didn't see that. <laughs> she was like, you don't see what's going on? I didn't see what was going on. To me, it looked like um, a young person who was in love with another young person and was nervous or had anxiety about seeing them. Now, the way Reno 
put it, it's like, oh, I can see that the, the writing is on the wall. They're going to break up. I didn't see that. I didn't see that coming. Did anybody else tell me, you guys, what you think? Did you see that coming? And even if though I didn't see it coming, um, I didn't need to hang out in that space for that long. It, and it wasn't even that long, but it was long enough, you know. Um, let's see. David asks, I'm wondering about the Chris Pine, uh, Zoe, Zoe Saldana, uh, Zachary Quinto cast franchise. Is that what you mean? Yes. They, they just recently said we're not getting that movie. And then I ain't saying that we're not getting it ever. They're saying that right now, that's not their focus. Their focus now is on the origin story that they're giving us, Star Trek origin. Again, we don't know what that means. So um, Lesser of Two Evils would be like, give us that other Zoe Saldana, Zachary Quinto, Chris Pine movie. But I, I, depending on where they go with the origin movie, I'm, I would be here for it. I would... You know, I would support it until they gave me reason to not support it. Yeah. Um, when Grace says, I think most of the cast to do Star Trek Four blew up. And it's just too hard to uh, too hard and expensive to get them back with the re returns those movies make, at least in his opinion. And I can agree with that. The there was there is a lot going on in Hollywood, period lose your director because that's one of the things that happened is that they they had a director that they wanted to lead this this Star Trek 4 movie and that director ended up having to pull out uh to go do a Marvel thing which I'm not mad it was I think it was Matt Shackman I'm not angry about that at all um if you don't know where you're going you can't hold people hostage for for years uh while you figure it out so maybe this is what uh, we're going to see happen with Star Trek IV, that they get a good plan put together and then they are able to reach back and get those, those actors or they abandon the idea completely and just focus on the origin story and whatever they want to do after that. Um, Justin says, I don't know how I feel about origins <laughs> i have to wait and see what the story concept is and a little more info yeah i mean i, I i've thought of a way that I, that would be acceptable to me that doesn't mean it would be acceptable to everybody i'm sure everybody has an idea of what would make a, a, a compelling origin star trek origin movie um you know that they're taking a page out of the star wars book uh going back and pulling it making stories from their back catalog that could have been you know it's just showing you where things were and where they are now your obi-wan kenobis your andor uh, uh ahsoka those are all okay they were mostly good <laughs> Good shows i didn't hate any of them but obi-wan kenobi out of those three that i just mentioned was the weakest but uh, Star Wars is doing it. Now we're going to get an entire uh, The Acolyte series and from Star Wars. So Star Trek is like, hmm, we could do this too. And it's, it's fine if you're going to do it well. Because yes, all of us can do, we can do anything. If you got the money for it, you can do anything. That don't mean people's going to want it. So they need to tap into their inner Trekkie and and get something that uh, everybody wants to see, not just Trekkies. You still want a casual audience. You still want a casual moviegoer to come see your movie. You, you can't make a movie just for Trekkies. It has to be something that is going to speak to a broader audience. So hopefully, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll get that, hopefully. Norman says, Gray and Adira were disregarded, finally. Representation is fine, but why can't they be key characters and dealing in depth about their breakup? They came across as an aside. That's exactly what the way I felt. It was, oh, 
we got to deal with this. The only reason we got this whole episode on Trill is because we got to deal with this. We could have went to Beta said, but no, nope, we're not going. We're going to Trill, and we're going to deal with this. Now, the part that worked in Trill for me is the ceremonies, the 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 um, rituals. I liked it, and I also liked Janal, BT Dubs, Wilson Cruz put his foot in the role of Janal because Wilson Cruz as the doctor is kind of, you know, more soft-spoken. Janal came across as arrogant, as, uh, as, oh gosh, just exude, he, he, he exuded confidence and he played an entire, Entirely different character. Even the voice was different. He played an entirely different character as Janal. I'm completely here for it. And we know that his experience uh, as playing host to Janal has impacted him. We saw that in, um, and, I'll, and I'll add this to the stage. We saw that the way he was looking when he was sitting at the bar, wherever that is, um, and the contemplative look that he had on his face, he's got, he's been profoundly affected by that experience with Janal. I can't wait to see how that plays out because Wilson Cruz also said that that does, it, it does kind of um, have ramifications on the character moving forward. So we're not done just because Janal was a one-time thing and all that we're not done with with uh the after effects of janal you know uh when gray says i saw it coming since adira mentioned enjoying being alone earlier this season you be know you'll be paying attention to some of those lines that they just go over my head <laughs> but yeah so if she enjoyed solitude then yeah the relationship is it's done it's done. And both of them did, you know, the relationship was over basically in both of their eyes to me, even though Gray acted like they were dense. And uh, I'm, am I using they and them in the wrong spots? Gray acted like he was dense because he was like, are we breaking up? And Adira was like, yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we mean. So, yeah. So uh, Marge is like, I'm, I'm glad that they at least chose to resolve the great Adira relationship rather than ignore it. And yeah, because it it was something big for Adira. This would be their first major relationship, their first love. So um, it, it was good to see Gray again. And it was good to see them uh, talk it out in a mature way and break up um, because we, you know, we ain't get no more of this anyway. So so eventually we was going to have to do something with Gray and Adira. They were going to have to uh, live their life together out on Trill or live their life together out on Discovery or break them do. David said, I see, I thought it was a great reboot and didn't understand why they didn't run with it. Well, what you're saying makes sense. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting more of uh, <clears throat> of the Kelvin universe of Star Trek, I wouldn't have minded that at all. I think um, you had a great cast. You had pretty decent stories. And um, yeah, I just, it, it just Hollywood gone Hollywood. Things are going to happen. And a lot of things stood in the way of uh, Star Trek, the Kelvin universe, continuing to, you know, the, and it, it didn't make the money that they wanted it to. But, you know, shouldn't even be looking for billions of dollars from a Star Trek project. Um, Marge asks Norman, I wonder if it was just a time issue. Wayne Gray says, I remember last time they announced Star Trek for Christopher Pine said, no one called me. I remember that, too. Yep. Justice says, if this is if it is an Enterprise movie, I'm in. I think at this stage, call me crazy. We need to stay the F away from the enterprise. I, I, 
I get it. I get nostalgia. I get wanting to be someplace where we know what's going to happen. We have an expectation of what's going to happen. We need new stories. We need new places to go with the existing stories. If we keep going back to the enterprise, we stay stagnant. We stay still. We still are in that same era. It is time to move beyond the enterprise. Now, do I mind strange new worlds? No, that is where I want the enterprise, strange new worlds. If we're doing a movie, forget the enterprise. Unless you're talking about NX01, Forget the enterprise. Forget forget it exists. Because uh, origin story, it should not exist yet. You know what I mean? Um, let's let's go a different direction. For me, this is just me. I, I think that we're beating we're beating um, the enterprise and the crews that we've already experienced on these ships. We're beating that into the ground. There are new stories that. Come could be told. Everybody is not going to agree with me, uh, but I, I really, I, I'm doing it, I'm saying that out of love. Like, we really need to go in a different direction in the enterprise. Um, <laughs> and Norman is now saying the, the enterprise movie needs to include Trip, even if he's only in flashback. We could get Trip, even though it wouldn't be that trip, we could get trip in an origin movie that um, if we're going back before uh, the, the show Enterprise, right? If we get, we're going back that far, you can get trip. You can get uh, Archer. It would be different, probably different people playing them because they would have to be younger in that timeline. But that, all of that works. The only thing that doesn't work is trying to put them on your enterprise, or the enterprise A, B, C, no bloody A, B, C, D, or E. <laughs> Enterprise-ish. Okay, I get it. <laughs> when Grace says, right, if it's an actual, actual founding of the Federation with Enterprise cast, I love that. Uh, but that's not a cinema-worthy thing, I don't think. Mm. Hopefully they can find somebody who can make it be cinema worthy. I don't know. <laughs> I think if they, Justin says, I think if they took some stuff from the books, it could work. But fair point, Wayne Grace, bring Trippy in. <laughs> hey, thank you, Clarence, for, for uh, announcing that. Don't forget to smash the button. That's going to help this little stream move around. And it also lets me know that you guys like what we're talking about here, you know, <laughs> that's really my big thing. And subscribe if you haven't yet done so. I've, I've picked up some subscribers uh, here recently, and I'm very happy about that. I'm on I'm on route to 2,000. I've been on route to 2,000 for at least a year, <laughs> maybe two. So anything that you can do to help out, I appreciate. Angus said. Klingons were a big part of the original puzzle. Let's see. 31st century Kronos. How? Are we going to see that in? Are you saying we're going to see a, a, a 32nd century, a 31st century Kronos in Star Trek Discovery? Because it's like when we're talking about the progenitors and we're talking about the chase and we're talking about that there were of factions. One faction was the humans and the Romulans. They were both uh, uh, very impressed with what they heard this progenitor talking about. The other half would be the Cardassians and the Klingons. And they was like, this is some bullshit. I'm not related to these motherfuckers. And that was the end of them. You know, they, they didn't want anything else to do with it. So uh, would moving forward what a 900 years make them change or, or yeah 800 something years moving forward 800 something years have a different group of Klingons say we should have took that a little bit more seriously will they be involved in this because right now it's only looking like Maul and Locke and the Discovery crew and Maul and Locke should really be like 
years behind the Discovery crew in finding anything because the Discovery crew can just jump there. It's once the once the Discovery crew crew got a leg up on their competition, meaning that they got that next clue first. There should be no way that the, that the Mall and Lock could catch them because Discovery just has to jump away. There's Mall and Lock, even if they have a, tra a, a tracking device on Adira, which we saw that happen at the end of this episode, that Maul had infiltrated the Trill ceremony and she put a tracking device on Adira and apparently they took that back to the ship with them. So now wherever a discovery is, Maul and Locke knows where they are. However, and you would think this, this tracking device would get found. You would think you would have to go through some kind of scans through the, uh, through the transport or anything. You would think this tracking device would not stand a chance getting on discovery, but we know it's going to. <laughs> Technolo technology is not that advanced, right? So we know it's going to get there. But even if it gets there, Maul and Locke's ship cannot keep up with Discovery. So they should never, uh, every time, they should always be two or three steps behind. Always. You guys tell me what you think about that. Justin says, I always wanted Archer and T'Pol, but that was me. Trip and T'Pol was okay. I liked Trip and T'Pol together. Um, I saw them force trying to force the Archer and T'Pol thing at first, and then they moved to this other thing. Either way, if they have to be in love, you know, you know somebody is going to get on this ship and fall in love with one of their shipmates. The quarters are too close. Somebody is going to uh, get attached, especially, you know, um, with the length of their uh, their their explorations, their expeditions, somebody is going. So if it had to be tripping to Paul, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Clarence said, um, "Book Burnham get some closure, and now Adira Gray get the same." I like the place where Adira and Gray end up. It's just it's just a grown up breakup. Even though they're still young, so I'm very proud of them for handling things very well. But it's just a, it's just a breakup. I say that. Well, when was my last breakup? The last time I had a relationship that I actually broke up and felt something about. <laughs> Gosh, that might have been. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. It's, and and yeah, me at least 10, 12, might have been more than 12 years ago. Um, and yeah, my grown ass cried. I was just about to talk junk <laughs> about Adira and Gray. I cried like a baby when my when I broke up. So I'm not as mature as I think I am. Um, David says Enterprise is iconic, but I see your point. Right. It's time to make something else iconic. And I know it's easier said than done. I know it is, but I'm not uh, uh, I'm not a writer as far as I don't do movies and screenplays. And if I'm being paid to do this, this is my job. I should be able to come up with a compelling story with all the material that you have to work with. And I'm not talking about the crews. I'm talking about everything, every little nuance that was introduced in Star Trek over all these years. You could pull a thread. And come up with a hit story out of that. It's so much material to choose from. But we keep we keep Kirk, Spock, Yahura. We keep going there, you know, uh, Picard, <laughs> Riker, Crusher. We keep going there. There are other people that we could we could dig into, or we can make up new people and relive certain situations just like we're doing right now with the chase and most of us not all of us most of us agree that this season so far has been a breath of fresh air because we're not um we're not in dire straits we this is an important mission that we're on but it's not the end of the world it's like this is it's kind of fun it's it's a scavenger hunt you know i like that uh, Justice 
says, I agree, Tasha. I'd rather have a future-based story so that, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, my eyes, <laughs> so that said, then origins should not be made. So that said, origins should not be made. So up to it's, it, If it were up, up to us, I'm pretty sure we all feel the same because nobody asked for this movie. Nobody asked for an origin movie. Um, or I can't say nobody. Very few of us may have asked for an origin movie. There are other movies that can be told or, or other stories that can be told. Yeah. When Grace says, I think it was the channel Sidetrack who said he heard the origin movie is the launch of the Enterprise with Captain April. I don't like that idea at all, even though I would like to see it. I would watch it, but no, it wouldn't be my choice. Um, launch of the Enterprise with Captain April and what was going on in that era. You know, am I interested in knowing? I don't know. I don't know. David said, I always thought Archer and T'Pol would make a couple. And there's that time slip episode where she's taking care of him. Only my, my last wife looks like Jolene Blaylock. Oh, so yeah, that was a little bit tugged at your heartstrings. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I liked that episode. And it did seem like they were pushing for that. And then they took a left when everybody else took a right. <laughs> Dude, Marge said, I love to see young Archer uh, to Paul. And I love to see young Archer to Paul and the others. To Paul at the Academy would be interesting. There are stories out there that can be told that are, that are far more interesting than dredging up the same stuff. So I agree. Um, Justice says, my fear is origins will divide us again. I want togetherness. We can disagree, but let's work together for the good of all. So a future story would be better for Trek as a whole. I'm just looking at, you know, we look at us as the um, the group that needs to be catered to. But when we start talking about movies, big screen movies, I really don't think it should be about Trekkies. Because one thing about us, Nine times out of 10, we are going to show up. It's who else you can bring in when you put something on the big screen besides the, the Trekkies. Who else are you bringing? And if you're not bringing anybody else, your movie is not going to fare as well. So they can set the movie anywhere, but it has to be something that not only is going to interest the, the old guard, but it's also going to bring in some new people. So, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> you want us to be considered for sure because we, we, we've been holding things down for so, so long, but then you got these, these uh, people out here who are looking for an, a new way to spend their money. Uh, we start hearing about superhero fatigue. I don't really know if that's a thing, but if it's a thing, something has to replace that, right? Now, we have started seeing rom-coms do better again um, in the such, but really, we could put in put something good, another big franchise in front of them and make it really good. They would be there. It's the same with the Star Wars fans. Star Wars fans are going to show up whether they hate the movie or love it. They're going to show up. Who else can you bring in? Uh, when Grace says, I don't think T'Pol went to the Academy. She was on loan from the Vulcan uh, science thingy. <laughs> this is true. And Marge is catching that too. She like, yeah, he, she didn't. She didn't go to the Academy. Academy. I'm sorry. Justice says, the last four years have been great for Trek and so awesome finding all of you, my family, my crew. Yes. And I'm loving, I love you guys for 
for being here with me. Week after effing week. Um, Clarence says, yes, Klingons should definitely be involved. Cardassian too. It's only like, it's just a matter of how we bring them into it. They, they may have just come up with the idea like, we should have took this seriously 800 years ago. This is something big. <laughs> you know, and boom. Take off from there. When Grace says, well, if they had, if they, if they had the line that they gave to go through diplomatic channels to enter Zenkethi's space, so they have to wait. Oh, okay. I got to read that again. They had the line that that they have to go through diplomatic channels to enter St. Kenthi's space, so they have to wait. This is true. This is true. So they're going to be sitting still for a second, which will give them a chance to catch up with them. You're right. <laughs> Trail security. He's like, yeah, Trail security is going to, we'll be able to handle it if they if they come here. Unless they dress up like one of us and just walking around in our ceremonies like they belong. And nobody recognized this is somebody that you've never seen before at your ceremony. But anywho, I'm giving that way too much thought. The next enterprise in a movie or series should be the G. The one from Picard. Um, when Gray said as heck. There are whole ships and crews entirely in the novels that they could create in new shows, which would be amazing. And that's what I mean. Because everybody didn't read books. Everybody doesn't read the books or the novels. And it's just like what we talked about on the last live stream earlier today, uh, X-Men 97. X-Men 97 thus far has taken uh, beats from different storylines and kind of merged them together and made a birth a new entity out of it. And the same thing could be said for Trek. You got all of this beta canon. You've got all of these video games and such. There are stories that can be told without milking the or milking the cow dry. You know, we can go to a different cow. <laughs> Norman says, I think a night in Thick Bay put an end to that pairing, considering how bad that episode was. <laughs> oh, Norman also says, also, oh, as a Trekkie, I was super skeptical, super, super skeptical of Prodigy beforehand, and it's now one of my favorites in modern Trek. So I agree. I don't think I was skeptical goal of it but i i was like uh, i was writing it off as it's a child it's a children's show it's i'm not the intended demographic but i'm going to watch it to support you know and then it turned out to be really really good like far better than i expected it to be so good more godzilla I don't need no Godzilla. <laughs> when Grace says, um, 100% Norman, I thought Prodigy was just a cheap monster versus alien ripoff. They repurposed by throwing Star Trek paint on it. Boy, was I wrong. Yeah, they they did their thing with, with Star Trek Prodigy. Justice says, I like that episode, but see why people disliked it. Um, we have a wedding to attend. Speaking of the wedding, what about Saru? Who's part in this episode? Um, Saru and Tarina have their first disagreement. Did it go the way you expected? I I never thought that I'd see them have a disagreement. Like, <laughs> but Tarina, you know, of course, in true Vulcan fashion, she's. She's disappointed. She's not angry. And Saru is afraid because he's never been in a situation where, you know, oh my gosh, I disappointed her. What if that, that means that she doesn't love me anymore? And he finds out that, you know, people, conflict is a part of being in a relationship. 
nobody is going to get out unscarred of a relationship. You're going to have at least one argument. And they 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 uh made it through. Now there were some mentions of the uh the uh movement, the Vulcan movement, the purists were they the purists. So the Vulcan purist movement, we we we've heard about that in this episode. Um the male Vulcan who uh kind of put a bug in in Saru's ear about Tarina kind of uh playing loose with her uh presidency. There, you know, what is his role with the purists? Um yeah, well, but as far as doing the job, we saw Saru do the job and we think I think he did a fantastic job. He he um he met that that group in the middle and he did what he could for them and they were satisfied with his response but then you get this little whisper in your ear about how your relationship could be hurting you, the person you love and she's like that's not your business <laughs> not your business to be worried about that i don't need you to save me i am not a little frail fragile flower so, you know, you do your thing, I'm gonna do mine. And and I was I was cool with that. I was cool with it. I'm gonna pick up your comments, see if anybody has any other thoughts on that. Um, Justin says, true one grace, there is so much lore to use that could make great shows or movies. Um, and I didn't even see. Oh, shoot. Marge was saying that she had a real wedding to attend. I'm thinking that she was talking about in the show and everybody is telling her to take care. Prodigy is animated, David. Oh, Rainer's 20 words. Oh, how low down can you be? 20 words, for real? You want me to tell you about me in 20 words? I couldn't do it. Sounds like one of those hack management books <laughs> advising that one. Yes, that, that was incredible. However, did, were you were you impressed towards the end that he that he knew so much about the crew already? I I found myself being impressed by that, even though um Tilly is basically like, yeah, you know the data about these people, but have you connected with them? You need to connect with them. And I agree with that too, but I wasn't mad. This is like the man's first, second day. I wasn't mad at him. I was mad at him from the, for the way that he was interacting with the crew and um, the 20 words thing that was just it's so freaking stupid. <laughs> However, I liked how much he knew about each one of these crew members. And I also like that we saw crew members that we don't see every day. So, you know, Owo, um, Detmer, Nielsen has been gone to the, the Voyager J now. Uh, there are so many people that they we could have seen that we didn't. And then they showed us these new people. They are trying just a little teensy weensy bit harder to include the extra people that they have walking around the ship in the show. So I'm good with that as well. Um, so Rainer's attitude is a bit abrasive, but it it's obvious that he, uh, he did his homework about the crew. Clarence says, I don't know. Rainer is a jerk, but somehow I got him. And that's how I feel. Because it, 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 and if you probably ask people who I managed at times, I could come across as a jerk because I was very, very to the to the point about things. Um, yep. I want to know everything about, you know, so leave me your basketball schedule. Leave me your babysitting schedule. Leave me these things. And I'm going to put together a, a, a schedule that will work for you and tell me a little bit about yourself and I'll do this, this, and this. But 
the management style nowadays, as Norman has pointed out, management style nowadays is more coddling. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm from old school. I had to learn. Everybody don't communicate the way you do, Tasha. You have to coddle adults sometimes. Okay, I'll, I'll learn to coddle. <laughs> Rainer came about during the burn. He ain't got time to coddle, you know? And that is, you know, you have to think about where he's from to to realize why he's interacting the way that he is. Yeah. When Grace says, I both loved and hated the 20 words. We got to learn about crew, but in the laziest way possible, right? <laughs> Marge, thank you, Marge. I thought... I thought you were talking about Saru's wedding. Everybody was telling you bye, girl, telling you you going to a wedding. And I'm like, I thought she was talking about Saru's wedding. I <laughs> so okay, now that that's clear. <laughs> Norma says, even worse was how Rainer dismissed. Even worse was how Rainer dis dismissed them. Now that was ugly. <laughs> I suspect the crew are not fans of him. Jellico, anyone? <laughs> Captain Jellico, anyone? Shucks. Marge says the Rainer interview sequence cracked me up, especially Tilly's reactions. Tilly was, and then she gave it to him, and I'm glad she did. Because even though I can sit here and make little excuses for Rainer for behaving the way that he did, he needed to be called to the carpet. He needed somebody. Hold on just one second, y'all. Sorry about that. Okay, because that's my sister. When my sister calls twice in a row, I got to answer Oh, <laughs> so anywho, um, yeah, he needed to be called to the carpet about the way he was behaving and the way he was talking to people. And after the way he talked to Stamets, Tilly was like, I had just about enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, say, David, you still, you still, Saru is a character in Discovery. Saru is getting married. Saru. Um, and, and, and the wedding probably ain't until towards the end of the season. <laughs> we got a few weeks for, for uh, Saru's wedding. Rainer is more jellico than Shaw. Uh, that's for sure. I, I see a little bit of both of them in them. I really do. Justin sees it the way you see it, Norman. I see a little bit of both. Rainer is just viewing this as a quick job he needs to get through, not trying to build a family, just complete the mission and get the F out. And I can see that when you're about to build a family, even though we ain't going to see you, <laughs> we might we might see him in academy. Who knows? Um, Clarence says, I agree uh, with Windgrace. I agree. I think it's possible Rainer will still do some cowboy-ish. But Will it be because we need the cowboy-ish? You know, sometimes, sometimes going by the book is fantastic. Sometimes you need that cowboy-ish. You know, and we saw it with Kirk. We saw it with Picard, even though Picard wouldn't say he's doing cowboy-ish. He was, you know. Um, we've seen it with all of their, our, our captains. Let me think. Was there one that didn't do cowboy-ish? I mean, uh, Cisco, uh, have we seen Pike do some cowboy-ish yet? Maybe that's the one that, that I haven't seen do, any, seen do anything that could be questionable just yet. Wingray says, I mean, what's more cowboy than riding on the outside of a starship? Okay. Okay, so you got me. <laughs> that was some cowboy ish, right? <laughs> um, damn, I'm trying to think what else. 
have we not talked about and say, oh, we haven't talked about the, the creatures. We haven't talked about the mission. And the mission was you need to go down there to trail. You need to talk to whoever you got to talk to. And we find out that's Janal to get the answers as to where the next clue is. And, you know, you think you go on a trail and they're just going to hand this answer over to you. No, you got to ask some questions. You got to go through some um, protocol pump and circumstance to get this answer. And then you burn them um, successfully answers the, the questions. And they then needed a, a vessel for Janal. And Culver's like, I'll do it. I'll do it because I'm used to being part of this crazy, I forgot how he put it. But yeah, I'll do it. So he does it. Janal is very impressed with the body that he has landed into. He's like, my God, this guy really works out. And I hadn't noticed before, but I'm like, shit. Yeah, you do. Don't you, <laughs> Wilson Cruz? You really work out. So, um, Again, he changed his whole demeanor, whole affect, whole voice, whole personality to play Janal. Janal was leading them on a blank mission to get to a red herring. And the red herring was, this is uh, where our prize is. What you're looking for is, was, is here. But we got these animals or these creatures that you're going to have to get past in order to get it. So what he was really trying to do is see how far they would take um, uh, this mission. Would they be willing to hurt another life form, to kill another life form in order to get this prize? Now, had Rainer come down on the planet with Burnham, ain't no doubt he would have shot the little creatures. He would have. He would have tried to kill them, <laughs> no doubt whatsoever. But the fact that she had um, book there, book can communicate with them as long as they're not like putting up a guard, which they were at first. Book can communicate with them. So book, you know, he tried to hit him with the empathy bomb. Shit didn't work. Then it was like, like, you know what? Let's just tell them. We put our faces up. We're going to tell them that we're on our way. I don't know how these creatures are understanding all of this, but I guess a book knows how, just knows how to communicate with them. So he's like, you know, um, we're going to take our butts to, <laughs> we're going to take our butts back and we'll try to come back and get it another way. And that's when we find out that Janal was just testing them a little further than the test. That they thought that they, the test was never over. Janal was there to complete the test. And Janal was very close to the uh, Romulan Dr. Telic, Velik, forgot his name, but he, he was close to him. He knows what their thought processes were as far as who they thought they would be safe uh, getting their hands on this technology. But he's like, this technology is dangerous and you need to go on and, you know, Whatever you do, you, it needs to be for the right reasons. Um, so a little bit of action, a little bit of what the heck is these creatures, and a whole lot of the Starfleet ideals in this situation were enough. That's what worked. At some point, maybe they won't work, but this time they did. Because if, if uh, what's her name, Maul and Locke would have gotten there, same difference as, as Rainer. They would have killed the beast. They would have killed the creatures to try and get the answer to the puzzle. Um, so, yeah. David said, Kirk is the ultimate cowboy. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite color? Was that asked in this episode? I don't remember. <laughs> On rewatch, I can't stop looking at Culver's chest. I don't blame you. <laughs> that is just like almost being, just being human. It's like, yeah, this dude really does work out. And wow. Yeah. Uh, Claire says they, they got the pieces of the artifact spread out like Dragon Balls. <laughs> 
Uh, gotta catch them all. Shit. <laughs> Wig Ray said, yes, I was equating this season to Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> didn't, didn't Harry Potter serve Dragon Balls as appetizers? I don't know. I never watched Harry Potter. <laughs> Angus says, I really hope this tech is it red matter? I got a strong feeling that we're about to see some other throwbacks. I, you know, I don't want to continually because I, 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 we have to see some more installments. I really think it's going to be the Iconian tech. I think it's going to be those gateways that you can use, but then it's got to be something else, right? Because they said they used it to do something, and I can't remember. They said that somebody used it to do something or they could use it to do this or that, even create life. Is that what they said? So I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to be those Iconian gateways, though. I honestly believe it. Um, Marge said, there's a moment in the science lab when we see Janal's face on the screen. Cobra stands beside it, which is... Which is cool. Oh, okay. So is it his real face? The real face of Janal? Wingray says, I think Norman was quoting more Monty Python. Okay. Hey. <laughs> uh, I'm referring to Monty, Pot Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Bridge of Death scene. What is your quest? Tasha needs to see Mark, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Apparently, I need to see Harry Potter as well. <laughs> I honestly just need to see. So y'all see that I'm struggling with, with uh, looking at my screens and stuff today. I don't, don't have my, my vision ain't right. I did have a benefactor, made a donation where I will be able to get my eyes examined and get some glasses. And I am so very grateful and I don't know if that person wants me to mention their name so I will not mention their name until they give me permission to do so but um maybe maybe by the end of the week or the beginning of next week I'll have some glasses and I'll be able to see when grace says using gateways to see all the world makes sense yeah it does it does I'm glad you said that it does I, I think that that could be where we're going and it could be a disaster if the, if it got into the wrong hands, I'm not a hundred percent sure um, what's going to happen. How far are we going to see? Are they going to destroy it? What's going to happen with this tech? But I do think that, yeah, um, in my opinion, we're going to get the Iconian tech stuff. He said, you don't need Potter, you just need Dragon Balls. I know a little bit about Dragon Ball Z. You know, mother to a son. My son is, gosh, son's going to be 30 this year. Lord have mercy. So amazing to me. So, yeah, in his lifetime, I've seen my share of Dragon Ball uh, TV, Dragon Ball movies, <laughs> Dragon Ball, UGO 2. Shoot. Clarence says one more episode and we'll be caught up with early screeners which is refreshing thank goodness yeah even though fortunately for me I've not I've not been spoiled and none of the spoilers have hit me so I'm really glad that um uh, we're gonna get over that hump with this ep this next episode because yeah that is one of my big fears is somebody telling me to answer before I can figure it out. <laughs> oh, yes, they are. The gateways are faster than the spore drive. Or And honestly, I think that is going to I keep going back to Stamets' legacy. This is going to play into his legacy in some way, shape, or form. They're taking the spore, the spore drive from him. Uh, and his legacy with that is over. So how will he be remembered in Star 
And I, I certainly feel like it's going to be something to do with this season, something to do with this quest that they're on. Claire says, I want to know more about the pathway drive. Yes, I would like to know, like, what the hell does that mean? It's obviously slower than the spore drive. Um, but it's got to be faster than your regular um, uh, warp, you know, uh, the, the highest warp levels they could go. And I, a little part of me thinks that we're going to see the Voyager J. It was mentioned. And they didn't have to mention Voyager J. It didn't have to be the Voyager J. Will we see the Voyager J in this season? I don't know, but I would. I, I kind of hope so. Really, I do. Clarence said he's avoiding spoilers like the plague, and they out there. People have been spoiled. I think. Uh, I think it was Marge who said she got spoiled uh, on something, and I. I hate that. I really do. The only thing I had spoiled was Fred. That was what Wingrace said. And I hate that. Even though Fred wasn't like so far, hasn't been a huge part of the story. Um, he he had his cameo last episode, but um people need to shut the F up. People in France, and, and I can't say that for sure, but I haven't seen any spoilers. People in France have watched all of Star Trek Prodigy, and I have not seen no spoilers. Of course, I'm not going out of my way looking for any spoilers, but I haven't seen any, which means if they could keep their mouth shut for all this time, it's been, what, two or three weeks since they've gotten Prodigy, we could keep our mouth shut, too. We can do that. I just broke my fingernail. I'll keep looking down at it. Wingray says, oh, what if Locke and Maul are already using the gateways to get around? Oh, or at least they have a, a base at one. They could ex that could explain how they keep up. That could explain how they keep up. That would be a crazy what if. I'm thinking like they got to move around at warp speed, but no. They could very well be already using the technology. Uh, Norman said, I've, I've run away from any sites that reveal whatever France was exposed to for Prodigy, so I hear you. Yeah, we, we don't need to know nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, Claire says, it's weird. Maybe the language barrier is enough, or they aren't as excited about it, but I'm not subscribed to any French Star Trek channels. You know, I've, I, I hang out sometimes quite a bit of time on, on Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it nowadays. So I'm sitting around on Twitter. You can get that shit translated if you'd like, but why would you want to do that? <laughs> I, I don't know. So I'm not, I'm not doing it. I, I don't speak French either. And, and maybe um, the, the biggest question that you ask here is, are they not excited about it? But I haven't heard anything, and I'm not trying to either. Yeah, especially people with VPNs and all of that. I don't want to know. Norman says, when Grace Maul made a comment in an episode, in episode one, how a ship got to them so fast when they were at the desert planet. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. She sure did ask. And... I don't think they have the gateway. So that's what Norman said. Um, they must have gotten paid well to get it early. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, look, um, as far as ratings on this episode, it's a bit slower. Um, I'm going to give it a four. A four out of five to, for me. Uh, even know if I was only rating uh, Wilson Cruz as Janal, it, it would definitely be a five, five out of five. But the uh, situations on Trill kind of left me like, eh, meh. But it was still a solid episode. It's not an episode that I didn't like. And um, one of the things that we definitely need to do is upgrade 
the technology on discovery. So a person with a foreign object, a foreign technological object cannot get on your ship that is sentient, by the way, cannot get on your ship and unknowingly uh, broadcast your location. That shouldn't be able to happen. <laughs> but it's happening. It's happening. I'm here. You know, if that's what we're going to do, that's the way we're going. I'm here. I'm giving it a four out of my five. Um, Clara says, I like your gateway talk, but I'm not sure how that links up exactly with progenitor tech. I need to go back and do some research. I don't think it's going to line up with progenitor tech but what we would what we may find out is that nobody has really seen the iconians and and are the progenitors the iconians and did they use their tech to see the galaxy that is my question um i don't think I honestly don't think that there is anywhere out, out in, in Alpha Canon. I don't think there's anywhere that's going to tell us for sure um, whether the progenitor tech and the Iconian tech uh, are are the same thing. But I think by stretching our imaginations just a little bit, we might find that they could be. And, and again, you know, I'm always theorizing something and I'm not afraid to be wrong. So <laughs> um, this is just where I am this week. Things make change. The information that I get, the more those theories uh, evolve in my mind. Yeah. When Grace says, from what I heard, the French prodigy deal was already in place before all the shenanigans went down. So it's just honoring a pre-existing deal. Yeah, I I've heard that too. That it was, yeah, it's not like it's on Netflix or something over there. It's on, a, it's on their, one of their broadcast channels, right? They already had that deal. Norman said, I gave it a I gave it a three earlier today, and uh, I stand by it. This episode went through the motions. Cruise was great, but not really memorable. The episode itself, I'm sure you meant. Um Angus appreciated the test. Marge is also giving this a four out of five. Wingray says not even just a foreign object getting on, but don't they throw their dirty uniforms in the wash? And you got programmable matter. You got all kinds of things that should have been like, hey, this little thing don't belong here. Boop. But no, tech, that they, they, their little primitive, and I'm calling it primitive in 31st century, you, you got a sentient ship. That's primitive. <laughs> you know, uh, it shouldn't have been able to get past Zora should not have been able so we still don't know that it did but we know that it did right clarence says uh, i actually really enjoyed the fight against the cloaked beast i thought it played much better than it did in the preview look i i liked you know i liked uh, uh, enough of it and, J and janal is just like oh we better hurry up they're coming <laughs> anyway uh, Norman said, "I've been, I have been wanting some insight on the Iconians for years. I, I have too. That's why I'm like, please be going there, y'all. Please take it there. The Genesis device could be a lesser form of the progenitor tech, it, and it could be because it's the same. But the the, the the problem with the Genesis device is, uh, it failed where the um." the progenitor succeeded doesn't mean that that the, 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 they're not related to one another that's another way to look at it four out of five for justin as well when grace says can we also have the preservers and the ton empire etc um i was thinking about that i was i said something about preservers progenitors and it was another p word not that p word Ugh. but anyway <laughs> the the Takan empire um clarence says 
it has to be something else. I was thinking the Genesis device was somewhat close to the progenitor tech, albeit a very primitive version. Yeah. Justin is agreeing about the Khan Empire. Um, Clarence is saying, I'm thinking the low fours somewhere. Really like this episode. If you want to know Clarence's thoughts, uh, Clarence, we are having a show tomorrow, I'm sure. And uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central Time, discussing Trek. That's where you will find Clarence giving his thoughts. And um, he gave us a neighborhood today. I'm pretty sure he'll he'll nail it down tomorrow uh, when he and his crew talk about the show. Um, David says, has anyone ever seen Laundry Done on Star Trek? I can't say that I have. Cannot say that I have. When Grace says there were a couple logical issues with the test, but it was fun enough to not bother me at all. Yeah, you know, you start thinking too much. You can think yourself out of a good time. <laughs> I've done it several times, but I did not allow myself to fall victim to myself again. I thought so too, Angus, on Genesis. I don't know. When Grace says, closest I can think of is when Sonia Gomez spilled hot chocolate on Picard and Q washed them off. <laughs> Sonia Gomez. Yes, Sonia Gomez brings a smile to our face. Especially knowing that she did pretty decent in Starfleet. <laughs> David said, yeah. Till it was mentioned, I've never thought about it, but Laundry, Sonic, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, they, they do the Sonic showers and all that stuff, so who knows? So, I don't have anything else on this, y'all. This is me in my third hour of live streaming. So, I'm feeling a bit tired and peaky because I can't have them kids longer than I was supposed to today. We got any anything that you guys are looking forward to for the next episode or any episode coming forward besides the answer to the riddle, basically. Um, what else might you be looking forward to? Let me know in the chat. Also, um, so far, is there a standout? So far, are you invested? Let me know. I, I am uh, very interested in hearing everybody's thoughts about where we are this last season of Star Trek Discovery. Captain Gomez, right. Like buttons. Thank you, Angus. Please, if you're here and you've not yet done so, hit that like button. Subscribe if you've not done so yet because I need y'all help to get to 2,000 subscribers. I've been trying to do this for two years now. <laughs> two whole effing years. The Constitution class ship. I don't know what we're talking about here. I don't remember. I don't know. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Marge. Thank you. Part of my mod squad, Marge and Wingrace. Keeping the chat safe. It ain't nobody out there really giving us no attention, no negative attention. But Marge and Wingrace are ready for you when you are, or if you if you dare. <laughs> Justin is invested. He's invested in this season in the storyline, as am I. You got me so far, Star Trek Discovery. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't do nothing stupid. You have an amazing week as well, David. Um Wingray says the trailer for this season showed a constitu constitution class ship. I'm excited to see that. So we, we're going to see one. So Wingrace is like, he's he's ready. He's sitting there. He's got his popcorn. He's ready for this constitution class ship to show up. Always fun and interesting. I always have fun with y'all. Um, have a great night. Thank you, Wingrace. 
security <laughs> marge and wig race security <laughs> oh gosh and yeah i ain't got nothing else wait, wait, let me let me pick up the last couple everybody is just saying have a good week and cerrito strong and discover is strong and i appreciate you guys for hanging out with me again some of y'all have given me three hours of your life today and i appreciate that um We'll do this again next week. If I got the specs, if I got my glasses, I'm going to do it on Sunday. If I do not have my glasses, I'm going to change the day of the week because I'm, I'm just hoping that the glasses come in before I have to do another episode. So, um, and by doing it like this again, I mean two in one day. This is, um, if I get my glasses, Keep your eyes open. Turn your notifications on so you know when this thing is coming. Okay, y'all? Thank you for being here. Norman, Clarence, Justin, Wayne Grace, Marge. Am I missing? David. Who else was Angus, who I hadn't seen in so long? I was very concerned. I was wondering where you had been, Angus. Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And anybody else who did not uh, contribute to the chat, Next time, make sure you say something. I just want to know you're here. Just say hi. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good night, y'all. Live long and prosper. Peace. Mm -hmm.